Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You, you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Hope someday you'll join us And the world will live as one Ooh. Imagine there's no heaven It's not hard to do no hell below us and no religion to imagine all the people living life in peace you you may say I'm a dreamer. All right, let me quit before I get flagged. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. You know, I have to call this place the crazy house, the mental house, Be not because I'm making excuses uh, or for people's responsibility and they can just blame whatever problems they have on mental health however how can you be normal in a crazy society please make it make sense if everything around you is mad and you know it's mad you looking at it you looking at all the isms skivers schisms separation the hate on hate but then you think that what grows out of this soil could be normal, perfectly fine. I mean, that is such a gaslight. Listen, y'all. When I look at what's happening um, and all the distractions that's going, and trust me, believe me, there are many. You got people worrying about voting. You got people worrying about reparations. You got people worrying about um, uh, uh, gay rights. You got people worrying about trans rights. You got people worrying about uh, me uh, uh, med medical insurance. You got people worrying about the disability. You got people worrying about the Social Security. But check this out. You don't hear nobody talking about what's really going on in Taiwan, in China, in America, in Russia, and all the things that could let y'all know that the end is possible, and it may be possibly closer than we all think. And all those other things, like who going to win the NBA championship, or, you know, if uh, Jokic... The Joker's going to have more um, points than Jimmy Buckets. I mean, all these distractions we got, and Lord knows there are millions of them, to keep us, first of all, as the human family, to just seeing who really is the marionette. You got crazy-ass white people that are shooting black people through the door. Now, you know damn well. Every white person is not like that. Oh, we couldn't have had a John Brown or a Viola Luso. So you already know that you wouldn't have had abolitionists. You wouldn't have had the Quakers. You wouldn't have had that if all white people think like the white man that shot that kid. Or that crazy ass woman who shot AJ through the door. These are white people that have bought into the propaganda, okay, 
And now, to some degree, when you've experienced a lot of privilege, sometimes um, equality looks like oppression, right? And then you already know, kids will be kids. You got a, a, a whole situation where she, you know, she don't like seeing these people, uh, the way these kids are playing. And I had a white woman that I grew up with when, as a child. She used to take our balls and take her, and call us niggers and all kinds. And she lived right next door to us. Right? And I want you to hear me real good, y'all, because this is the truth for God in heaven. Old Marion is gone now. She gone. But what she would do was she would call us niggers. She would she would do all kinds of mean things. And I'm saying the oldest one of us was probably about seven. I was real little. little I mean, I'm sorry. And I had no idea what she was saying. Except for when she would come out real fast with that stick and be trying to stick it at us through the fence. My brothers then would move me out the way because obviously their responsibility was to watch and protect me when I was outside with them. So I had no idea what the hell she was saying. It wasn't until I got older that, um, you know, I, I realized that this lady was really crazy. And she would, it would take my father to go over there and get our toys back from this white woman. Okay? Uh, I don't think never once did he think that he would get shot. Make a long story short, when Marion got up in age, and I told this story before, her she had one son, his name was Charles, and he married. And guess what? He never came by to see her. Ever, ever, ever. So then she started having dementia. She had a big old two three bedroom house by herself. Um she had no visitations from anyone that I could remember. And so what she would do was now she's starting to come over to our house. Now she's beginning to be a little bit, you know, so lonely that she will hear noises in the house and beg us to come over there and listen. And the noise, help me with the noise. And we'd be like, because we're like teenagers now, right? Fuck you. That's what we wanted to say. And I'm just going to tell you how we used to be. And you can agree or you can ag or not agree. My parents, not my father, let me get that straight. He would just say, oh, you done came over here, Marion. Or y'all walk that crazy lady back where she was. You know, he would say stuff like that. But... Never once did we think about beating her up for all the stuff that she did when she was young. Somehow, um, and this was, I mean, I can't even remember us ever thinking about pushing her down or anything of that nature. We used to go in and play like we hear stuff so she would stop because coming over because we would only have to walk her back home. Which, you know, it was still next door, but still, when it's cold outside and it's snowing and ice, I'm wondering how the hell she got up these stairs. How the hell she got, and here she come. And we look out the window and it be, here come Marion, here come Marion. Oh, white lady. Hmm. But again, we never beat her up. And nobody ever thought to shoot at her through the door. I mean, damn. And believe it or not, she never shot us. She would steal our toys. But they all called us niggers. I mean, that was just, you know, that was, that's just the way it was. So when I think about these stories and I look at how the, this United States has divided us all. I mean, from LGBT, everybody. We just so divided that the and the puppet master is laughing. Can you imagine 
if all the people that wasn't in that one percent could find more in their sameness than in their differences can you imagine what the hell would happen the jig would be up it would be up and all those diehard fools we have to deal with them the ones who think they're gonna keep killing people because of the color of their skin or doing whatever and it wouldn't just be black it would be a collective effort going we're not going for this shit no more we gonna stop this we going but you know what we can't do it It's been hundreds of years ingrained in the society to get it to where it is right now. I saw this lady on one of these conservative stations talking about how great it was for slaves and how great slavery was for us. You know, and of course, she was alive when the shit was going on, uh, Jim Crow, because she was a senior white woman. But can you imagine if they asses were enslaved right now? And everybody that's under the sound of my voice, if you haven't seen the movie White Man's Burden with John Travolta, uh, Travolta and Harry Belafonte, go check it out. Go check it out. It's the almost one of the best movies I've ever seen. And they took it out. They let it play for a little while. They just banned it from the theaters because they couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. You look at this poor white trash who uh, don't have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. And then they have the nerve to be racist against black people. Well, I'm white. Because the puppet master have gotten him to believe into the illusion that he's better than somebody. And it reminds me of that uh, a scene um, uh, an Aretha Franklin movie. I mean, I'm talking about the one that lasted uh, that was that was a few days old with Cynthia Erivo. It reminds me when the white boys wanted to rape and and um, maim CL. When his car crashed when at the beginning of the movie and he was changing a flat tire. And he made Reed get in the back seat. And he said, you like my car? Remember, he, he just threw him the keys. He threw him the keys. When you're dealing with things like that. And they have the nerve to be racist. Even though you living better than them. Then you know the puppet master has done his job. The projection and the gaslighting has worked to the fullest. And y'all are surprised that nothing, anything but narcissists could grow up out of this soil? It is the mother of all narcissism. To sit there and say... We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, but you got a bunch of damn slaves in your house and you screwing a, 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 a little child. Sally Hemming. All of the narcissism and the projection and the gaslighting that has come, that this whole foundation was laid on, and then y'all want to sit up here as narcissist specialists and talk about um, what the damage of hell yeah you got narcissists in your family because the whole damn institution is narcissistic and as a person of African descent what could be more worse than, be, than thinking about my very existence over here is a crime a kidnapping crime and ain't shit I can do about it you just stole my, wealth, my ancestors wealth Gave, made them work free, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, but for 100 years. Over 100 years. Free labor. Free labor. 
And then you've engineered some so selfish individuals that will say to you now, I don't got nothing to do with that. My ass, I ain't do that. My answer is, yeah, but you're benefiting today after what your ancestors did a hundred years ago. So you are just as guilty of the bondage that we in than your ancestors was. And until you get ready to right that wrong, uh, uh, wiping history out the books and books out of, um, out of schools and library is not going to save your ass. That's not going to save you. The only thing is going to save you is for you to face what the hell you've done. And the only thing is going to get us through this as the United States is to face what we've done, be held accountable for what we've done, to be able to heal from all this damage. Now, I sit up here and try to gaslight my ass like it never happened, so I'm just going to wipe you out the, uh, the books in school? Are you freaking crazy? How crazy are you people? Look. I'm getting a little upset because y'all frustrate me sometimes because I know as a society we are so much better. I've seen I've I've seen changes whether they were superficial whether it was not. I was alive when the biggest civil rights legislation that was ever passed <laughs> it was possible. Things are we were moving in a great direction as a human family. And now we just back to the shit, as Millie Jackson would say, back to the shit. I would hope that everybody under the sound of my voice, black or white, black and white, but I should say, would realize that either we're going to learn to live together or this whole place is going to perish and we're going to perish as fools because while we're being distracted the United States is on some other kind of stuff and we're about, about to have World War Three. we about to have World War Three. while you got people over here telling you vote for a Democrat or vote for a Republican vote, vote your best interest and that's going down the list you don't vote for a you know, that's how voting is, is, is effective, how it should work. But when you got corporate America in just and so just just basking in the hypocrisy, they know we don't have a chance with our elected officials. But we better start paying attention. We better start paying attention. I say that humbly, and I say that for real, for real. Those of y'all who are poor, you don't got no right to even be prejudiced. It's foolish. And the only thing we're going to get something done, the only way we're going to get some done, something done in this society is that we have our allies and we have the support of everybody, and we got to make it happen. Collective as a country. It's got, that's the only way it can happen. If it don't happen that way, it ain't going to happen. Because the day of the master and slave is, is really over. Um, and it's going to be some serious rebellion when you try to put us back in that situation. I mean, physical, chattel. <laughs> so, what are we going to do about it as a nation? That's the biggest question. We're going to continue to be manipulated? Or we're going to stand two toes down in equality, justice, and liberation for everybody? I don't know. What y'all think? Let me have it. Let me have it, because this is a pretty long video, so I'm going I'm to see you in the next one.